feel like Gordon Bombay would have taken his career to even further heights. Everything's flashy, everything's cocaine, everything's fun. Open wide for some soccer! I don't care what you think about, what your personal thoughts are at home. I care that you hate the Cowboys. Call this college rule! Welcome back, everybody, to the Sports Experience Podcast. Dom and Chris here once again. Uh, a couple of comics here who enjoy talking sports. And uh, as always, recording down here at Angle Studio in Tucson. Uh, for all of your audio needs downtown uh, Tucson here. Uh, also, make sure you give a follow to our social media uh, handles you saw down below, also at the Sports Experience Podcast on uh, Instagram. Let's boost those numbers up. Come on, everyone. I see a lot of views on those uh, videos there on YouTube. Not a heck of a lot of subscribers. Let's boost it up. You're thieves. If, you, if you're watching it for free, you're thieves. Anyway, Chris, who we got today? Ah, oh, man, we got... Probably the greatest power forward ever. Uh, some people debate it, but I'll, I'll throw him in there. We're talking about Tim Duncan. Uh, yes, the Tim Duncan. The large man from the small island. The large man from the small island. Kind of a power forward, kind of a center, but kind of awesome all around. Well, I just always think of him with uh, Robinson. You're just like, well, he's always going to be the power forward right there. But I think they only played together for about six years. Yeah. So, I mean, we'll, we'll still, get into that. Still. Yeah, still. So, uh, Timothy Theodore Duncan, born April 25th, 1976, in St. Croix, U.S. Virgin Islands. Uh, his parents were immigrants from Anguilla. His mom, Ione, was a professional midwife, and his dad, William, was a mason. And he had quite the athletic group of siblings around yes, him. Yes, very uh, athletic sisters. Mm -hmm. Um and we see it, it influenced him because growing up, all he did was swim. Like, he didn't play basketball uh, because his older sister was a, a, an Olympic swimmer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Older sister Cheryl was a swimmer, and uh, she was a champion before she became a nurse. And then his older sister Trisha swam at the 88 Olympics in Seoul. Yep. So... That's pretty awesome. Yeah. So he's going to follow them swimming, which is kind of crazy to think someone who will be as large as Tim is a swimming champion. It, very much so. <laughs> but then fate steps in. Fate steps in. Mother uh, Nature steps in. That's right. And I think it's at the age of 14. Mm -hmm. um, the only Olympic swimming pool in St. Croix was actually destroyed by Hurricane Hugo. And yep. when something like that's destroyed, they were just like, well, we're not going to rebuild it. <laughs> it's um, gone. So he decided to pick up basketball going into high school. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's like, a, and it's like more of like a team sport. He said that where he wanted to be more social with, with his sports because swimming is so individual. So individual, and, and he's a very quiet yes, guy. Yes. I'm so basket, guy. and basketball was like literally the only, I feel like he only, he's a one sport man. Yep. You know what I mean? So. He doesn't uh, spread himself thin. He, he right. knows what he wants. He, did you see why he quit swimming, though? So th the teams would keep on swimming there. They just didn't rebuild the pool. He got sick of swimming in the ocean because he was afraid of sharks. Oh, yes. yes which the afraid of sharks. I was it's thinking, not I was the like, sharks why? you yes. should be afraid of. It's the dolphins, everyone. It's Go true. watch that episode of King of the Hill. It's, so it's true. true. Uh, unfortunately for him, uh, the day before his 14th birthday... His mom dies of breast cancer. Uh, yes, that's... And she prom make she has her kids promise her that they will all graduate from college, which will come into play later in this episode and what happens. Well, it's not like he's this, like, basketball phenom where everybody's just like, you know, like... It's not like, oh, you're going to do two years in the NCAA. You know what I mean? That, that's not... So she's just like, will you please just graduate Get a college. degree and get a job. And it's such a great... Yes. Um, growing up in St. Croix, um, his, uh, athletic director said at, uh, St. Croix Country Day School, he was so huge, so big and tall, but he was awfully awkward at the time. Yes. He is a raw piece of clay after he says, you know what, swimming, I'm afraid of sharks. I can't do it. Can't do it. So he goes to St. Dunstan's Episcopal High School there, averages 25 a game as a senior, and he's getting some attention, but not like a ton of attention. Well, they're, they're saying it because the league is so poor that they're saying like, yes, we see that he's 6'8", six, 6'9", six, you know, we see that he's going to be a big man, but... The competition isn't there. The competition isn't there to prove that he's going to be a great player, which that works out, and I feel like it... it he has this path that is so 
weird you know what i mean where like the pool gets destroyed he doesn't want to swim in the ocean he his, then turns the basketball mom he, tells him to graduate college he's yes his mom tells him to graduate college he's under scouted and or or maybe even properly scouted because like he shouldn't have had credit i mean he should have been scouted alone based on traits but like by the arizonas the kentuckys the yep. dukes like you're not giving scholarship spots to guys that are money in the bank that you can go watch play AAU. I mean, granted, if you have a spot, you want to get this guy. You want him, but yes. Uh, so he ends up going to Wake Forest. His head coach said that at age 16, he allegedly played Alonzo Mourning to a draw in a five-on-five -five pickup game. I saw that, which is, it's got to be, that's got to be proof. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It, it's one of those things where you're just like, oh, yes, he can really play. He, he said he during his interview with him, Duncan was just kind of staring blankly at him the entire time. And then as he got to, he's like, oh, that's just who he is as a person. Yes. Just he is like, very quiet. He doesn't feel the need to... Focused. Yes. Uh, quick learner. Uh, these are the other schools he had offers from. So I wanted to bring this up just to like, we're, we're not looking at top 20 like top no. 10 teams here as far as recruiting classes it's university of hartford university of delaware and providence so i don't know and but, wake forest is a bad team you know what i mean in they're a, not like a, a bad team but i mean they're in the acc so they're in the, well that's what i mean they're in the acc but they're always they're not a duke they're not a north carolina they're not even a north carolina state you know mm -hmm. what i mean so him coming in um because I think the year before he came in, they were actually a good team. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So like well, Rodney they were, Rogers played for yes. them that year. So they were starting to like build this kind of good team. He comes in, and they are just like great right away. Well, they were originally going to redshirt him. I mean, which to me I was saw smart. That. Yes. Which is like, hey, you and have I, an extra year of eligibility. Like you he know. he more than probably anybody also would have benefited from that because his skills just were still raw. Yeah, but <clears throat> the talent is there. Yes. And he's very smart, and he's a quick learner. The, probably the fuck, the fastest learner. Yeah. So because of one of their recruits violating NCAA rules, they yep. throw him into the fire in 93-94. He has a scoreless first game in college, but finishes the year at almost 10-10. and 10, Yes. Which... As a freshman center in the ACC at this time is pretty damn good. And we'll see. He's the double-double champ. Oh, yes, he um, is. And that's the thing that sometimes when you redshirt somebody, they need that year to, to adapt to the game. He just needed, like, one game, and he was like, okay, here we go. <laughs> so this is how this works. Yep. 94-95. Uh, now he's establishing himself as one of the best. Like, could you imagine if he entered as a redshirt freshman and just, oh, yeah. oh my God. Um, Jerry West even said at the end of this year he could have been in the top pick in the NBA draft. And a lot of guys were leaving early at this time because the salary cap was coming in 96 yep, to the and, NBA. And this was a lot of one and duns, and this was a lot of high school guys Oh, yeah. Out. So, like, just his potential right off the bat. So, sophomore year, though, um, ACC champs. Yes. Which is huge. Um, plays versus uh, Rasheed Wallace, I saw, and kind of dominates him, who was playing for North Carolina. Oh, yeah. And a lot of people were talking about that because Rashid is such a defensive force, and Tim is looked at almost like not weak, but he so doesn't trash talk. He, you know what I mean? But So there's like always questions, or at least questions at this time going in, because there's definitely not later, <laughs> uh, about maybe his toughness or whatever, and people are saying just like, oh, no, no. This no, he's, is... he's just going to be a machine. You're going to look up at the scoreboard and go, oh, yeah, we forgot yep. about all of that. Because I think he, he averages 16 and 12 this year, he and, does. and you're, you're just like, this guy can legitimately be like you were saying, going to the draft. Yeah, so they make it to the Sweet 16. I didn't want to point out. Yep. Bryant Reeves, who was a lottery pick, they play Oklahoma State, and although they lose, in that game has 12 points and 22 rebounds to go with eight blocks. And you don't see these rebounding numbers at all. Do you well, know what I mean? It's no. like, yeah, it's and, But great. I mean, as a sophomore, as a sophomore, first team, all ACC. So 95-96, yep. same thing again. They win the ACC tournament. Averages 19 and 12 a game, first team All ACC, Defensive Player of the Year for the second year for in a row. Second year in a row. Down in the block, man. He is just. You don't even you don't even realize he's there because yeah. everything is just so correct. <laughs> first team All American, ACC Player of the Year. 
Unfortunately, they get absolutely throttled by Kentucky in the Elite Eight. Yes. And that Kentucky team went on to win the national championship. But then we get into the offseason, and Tim is in the 96 NBA draft. We've talked about it. One of the most stacked yes. ever of all time. He would have probably been the first pick by Philly. Which would have made all the – it would have been such a – The domino. Inter- that's the, that, yes. Oh the the domino God. effect of him going first, it, it – yeah. It would have been insane because where does AI go? Yes. Where does and Kobe then, go? Where, where does Kobe go? And then, yes. Steve Nash, all these guys. It, it's – that one would have been great because that's what they were saying. They were like – Coming out of his junior year, they were like, oh, yeah, you're going to be number one. And if you go number two, people are going to be like, oh, that was surprising. You know what I mean? Like, that was what – so, like, I can't even remember another player that's done that since he's done that that is so hyped and then comes back for the senior year. Like, you're guaranteed to be number one. Like All I, the money. All of the money. At least in the NFL it happens, but in the NBA, I especially in the last, like, 30 years, I know of no other – player that's that. ever played yes yes and that's what i mean basketball they're they're ready to jump ship you know what i mean it's like the nba now the teams are almost set up for that they're just like no no no, come we'll, we'll pay you a bunch of money and we'll develop you <laughs> yeah instead of college as a student athlete exactly where you earn a nothing so all he does is first team all acc acc athlete of the year acc player of the year wins the naismith and oscar robertson trophies <laughs> goes 20 and 15 60 percent field goal percent he's the best player for the second year in a row like yep. individual player in college basketball yes which is ridiculous i mean the only thing that sucks about this season for him is they lose in the second round to stanford yep that that's really all that that's really the only downer to his season. Um, it, it's I think it's interesting because college basketball sometimes you look at these guys they have four years, and that March Madness is truly that because if you get to a Final Four it's like pretty ridiculous. Yeah, you know just what I mean? one Final Four, but back to back ACC champ, um, like you said. Best player in college basketball for two years. Uh, I, yeah, I can't say enough about how dominant he was in college. And you know what else he did? He got his degree in psychology. Which his mom would have been so happy about. It, it's, he's also established himself as one of the best defensive players. That's yeah. what sometimes gets lost. Is You're like, oh yeah, he's probably the best two-way player in, in this era. Oh, easily. So, the 97 NBA draft, we've talked about this in a couple episodes, made me quite happy. Thanks for getting your degree, Timmy. (laughs) Another extremely lucky situation. I felt like he was lucky to go to Wake Forest because he kind of became the man because he probably needed that for, like, confidence boost and all of that kind of shit. Goes, (laughs) and we've talked about it on the Sean Elliott episode. We've t- <laughs> the David Robinson episode. We talked of it's just kind of ridiculous, but it is so lucky. Robinson goes down with a, a an injury. Uh, I think the Spurs. Elliot go, does too. Yep, I think the Spurs go twenty and something. So like they're literally the worst team in basketball. They then get the first pick. People are saying they were just like this is when teams were like, dude, we should start tanking for real. I was like. But it wasn't even that they just started tanking. They're two best players, and I, I think know. Chuck Purser was shelled for the season. The only thing that had to break their way was the Celtics having two lottery picks and not getting it. This is exactly why Rick Pitino left Kentucky, because he thought they were going to actually swoop in and, and yeah get Duncan. But nope, he goes to a veteran team in a smaller market, which is perfect for him. It, every, everything. Coach is perfect. Yeah. Robinson's there to teach him is perfect. They have a absolutely great team already. Yeah, like you just walk in, it's like, oh, we we lost sixty two games, but like, yeah, three of our best players weren't there. Yes, last year. Yes, so, and now we're adding the best player and, yes. in college basketball to and we, make our front court. Also. And we see that that the four years pays off, and he's re- NBA ready right away. Yeah, I don't think we'll ever see this again, Chris. Yeah, and like I don't think we'll ever see a. F- First overall pick, A, spend four years in college, but B, come in completely this good as advertised. Yes. 
Um, so in his second road game, he has 22 rebounds against Dennis Rodman. I saw that. Charles Barkley said, I've seen the future, and he wears 21. Which, if you're impressing the hell out of those guys out the gate, you're doing something right. Yes, and that's it, – it's so ridiculous, especially because he's with David Robinson. I remember they were talking about because he's coming into the Spurs – um, and this is just his personality. It was like somebody working with the Spurs. They were like, oh, we got you this uh, advertising deal, you know, to get yeah. you some extra money and st- something like that. And his response was, okay, well, what did you get for David? And it was such a – and he was just like, oh, I didn't – I'm just working for you. Like that was the ad guy's response. And he just goes, well, it's his team, so he should be involved in this. Because they were like trying to make him like the, the face <laughs> of this team. And he was just like, no, no. And he really was – it really was a, a – because their, their nickname was the Twin Towers. Yeah. And it really was that where it was two superstars – with Sean Elliott. It was such a ridiculous I know, it's, it's team. It's ridiculous because – and he has kind of a quiet leadership aspect about him. Yes. Like Robinson does. So it's the, – the two of them are just perfect together. Yes. I found this hilarious. He was the NBA Rookie of the Year, which is obvious, but he won NBA Rookie of the Month every month. Yep. His rookies. So there wasn't a month that he wasn't the best rookie. Not to say the 97 draft. I mean, it's no. not working with a very deep bench, but still. It's not It's not the 96, but it, it was, <laughs> yeah. So uh, good. But for 82 starts this rookie year, averages over 21, almost 12. He's averaging, this is what I found most amazing about his game. Over time, he averages 2.7 assists and 2.5 and blocks. If you're combining for five as a power forward in those yep. two categories, which he does for a decade plus. That's really amazing. I also, uh, I don't think they're counting because they kind of count this now as uh, shots disrupted or whatever. And they were talking about how, because he's always in the right position and how he did that so much. And then him, obviously him and Robinson being in there, it was just like the lane is. Go ahead. Drive to the basket. It's dead. So they play the Suns in the first round of the play. It was that at the time, the greatest turnaround ever, which broke the record of when yep. they had gotten David Robinson and Sean Elliott in the same season. It's great. Eight years before. It really is. So they draw, they, they play the Suns. He drops 32 in games one and two, and they end up winning in four. But then they lose to Carl Malone and the Jazz. What an upstanding round. gentleman Carl Malone is. Yeah, like Carl like Malone is the exact same person as Tim Duncan. Said no one ever. <laughs> Said no one. Else. Great power. Top two power forwards. Completely different people. Top two power forward. One's a piece of shit. Tim Duncan played more years than what Carl Malone's into. Let's talk about whoa, that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Allegedly. Allegedly. Actually, no, it's not. No, it's I not. I think a blood I test keep, confirmed it. I, keep I forgetting. feel like he did it. He literally has a son who played in the NFL. <laughs> <laughs> Whose mom was uh, All right. Anyway, 98-99. His second year. Uh, uh, strike shortened. Strike shortened, of course, as is basketball was one want to do in recent uh, decades. <laughs> so true. Um, they start a little rough. They actually start so rough that their historic coach, Greg Popovich, is under fire, which yeah. is such a weird thing to look back on. Well, and I'll say this. People wanted him out after he axed, I think, Bob Hill. Yeah. And just the way that he ran the team and his personality. It's like Belichick and why Belichick is probably getting fired after this year. If you don't win yes. and you treat people like that. You're not endearing yourself to anybody. No, no. Yes. And, yeah, they started 6-8 and eight and people were like, this team is too good to be 6-8. and eight. Yes, and they were. And cause Timmy turns it around with the yep. rest of them. <laughs> Thir- finish, win 31 of their last 36 to get the top seed. In the West and best record in basketball. And then we start to see this trend of him getting all, Double M- doubles. all NBA first team, yep. all defense <laughs> first team, and literally 2012, 24. You know, like his his averages are so ridiculous for, I don't know, his whole career. Yeah, that's the funny part. It's like the same every year. Yes. It's, you're, you know exactly what – he's the opposite of the box of chocolates and Forrest Gump. That is what Tim Duncan's – and you know exactly what you know, you're going to get. 20 and 10. <laughs> 20 and 10, maybe some good passes and block shots. Some block shots, three. 
<laughs> you got new legs. Going into the playoffs, though. People every- were talking mad. I remember people talking mad shit, and I was very mad about it. Well, everybody said Spurs had never won a championship. Um, they're going to fall apart. A couple of other teams were looking really good. They blow the Timberwolves out. They play KG LA. talked so much shit at the beginning of that series, and he, Duncan was the one that stuffed it in his face. Yes. We well, have to go to Boston to win a title, Nancy. Well, that was one of these things where, like, what if he went in 96 and went to, you know, wherever. Right. Where If he didn't go to, you know, the Spurs, uh, would he have – Minnesota would have had a much better shot against the Lakers. Oh, sure. yeah. It's just such a – that's what I mean. If he had gone in 96, it's such a weird-ass thing. Talk about spider webs. Um, end up being L- beating L.A. This is the big rival, and this was – I distinctly remember all of these Western, you know, games, but this is the first one um, where they go to L.A. and – I mean, not, uh, L.A. come to them, and, and they beat them. They swept them. They yep. played the last game at the Forum. They shut that place down. They shut that basketball. place down. Yep. Uh-huh. Which is such a great on the road. Yeah. yeah. On the road to championship. A certain man in his penis just yep. walked away yep. that one day. Then in the next round, we talk. That's Sean Elliott's kind of series. Yep. As we t- go check out that episode. Sweep the Blazers. They took the highway to the danger Sabone zone and took them down. And then we get the finals. And I think for the first time, people outside of ACC country and outside of <laughs> San Antonio got to see him. Bless you. Yeah, man, got to see great. him on a grand stage, like yes. on you the, know the top stage. Like, yeah, San Antonio compared to other bigger markets, you're yes. not gonna, you know. And he's very quiet outside of what an Ed Shave Gel commercial. What is he with Robinson? With what, Robinson, what is exactly is he peddling? Do yes. you know him from anybody other than he's super tall? So they play the Knicks, who. Are hamstrung without Patrick Ewing, and, and it shows. I was just gonna say the it's such a ridiculous because they dominate the front court, you and know it was I mean? a it, rough and tumble front court defense series. Yes, they but they, made. I mean, they were ready for that. You know what I mean? I think I saw the the stats where they literally like tripled everything that the because I think it was Larry Johnson and whoever the Knicks backup, Chris Dudley, Chris Dudley. Um, but that's what I mean. They they literally were that much better, and I, they only lost one game where Duncan had a poor he second had a bad half. game. Yeah, which just happens. You know what I mean? But that they were so dominant in this series. You know, in all this going to the championship, like the Timberwolves sweeping LA Trailblazers, and then they lost two games in the entire postseason, and then almost sweeping the Knicks. So, what was it uh, in game four? After following up that game, he had a uh, poor game. He had twenty-eight and uh, I believe eighteen, and then in game five, which they won seventy-eight to seventy-seven, thirty-one and nine. Which it's crazy. He's the Finals MVP, his second year in the league. Yep. I read now a, everybody knows him. Yeah, <laughs> I'd read a quote after the game. Popovich said to Jeff Van Gundy, the Knicks coach, "I've got Tim, and you don't. That's the difference." Yep. Like I mean, it would have been nice to see a healthy Ewing play. It you would know. have been fun, but I don't think it would have changed the outcome. No. Even though I'm a Knicks fan. <laughs> would have extended it by a couple of games, maybe. Yes. Yeah, it just... would have been a, a game six, you know, <laughs> yeah. Spurs win. That's the way it goes. But uh, the next few seasons is when you kind of start to see him taken over as leader and yeah the man of the Spurs. Because Robinson's back is starting to kind of give yep. way. And then he's the number one option now on the team. Um the following season, twenty three and twelve again, like you said, all of these years, all defense first team, all NBA first team. Yep, he misses the playoffs though. Then this is you see why he is so important to this team in this year. I feel like because he has an injury right before the playoffs, and then they lose. <laughs> yeah, so they doesn't play at all when they lose the Suns. Yep. And this off season, I believe, is the one where he's now a free agent. Yes. And he 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 came dangerously close to not playing for San Antonio anymore. And he signed a huge contract, which I imagine they were so grateful for because he wanted to stay. But I think the allure of playing like for L.A. or or whoever, 
Well, you know what it wasn't w- enough. Well, you know what it was. Orlando had him hook, line, and sinker. Oh, Orlando. He was coming in that off season with Grant Hill and Tracy McGrady. Oh, they shit. They were going to build been... that first big three with Doc Rivers. Oh, man, that would have been But wild. what happened was he was interested in Orlando. It's definitely closer to where he lives. Orlando wasn't going to let him to use, I believe, use the team airplane to fly his family. Oh, places. because they live so close. So after that, Popovich and Robinson were like, we got to make one last-ditch effort, yeah. and they ended up bringing him. He was... With, that is the biggest spider. I think I even talked about it in our Grant Hill episode, but yeah, that yeah. was like a huge spider web. Because that NBA. that would have changed, especially what you see. Like McGrady was so good in that era. Grant Hill was so good <laughs> in that era. If they had gotten Duncan, that would have been wild. If and they had gotten Duncan and a healthy Grant Hill, with the East being so dry. horrendous, oh my god. They would have that would have been a decade's worth of Orlando finals Going appearances. To, yeah. That would have been like, hey Shaq, remember us? Yeah, seriously. Um so we re-signed seven years for like hundred and twenty million. Mm-hmm. Um and it, it it is something that you see with him that he just kind of sticks with his team. Um man, it was it's been so weird if he was played for a while. I know, isn't that just bizarre? Yeah. So uh 2000, 2001, 2001, 2002, uh, just more of the same. 23, yeah, 22, 10, yeah. It's, he is such an amazing double-double machine. Unfortunately, both of these seasons end with losses to the Lakers. Yep. Because this is part of the Lakers' Kobe first Shaq. three-peat. Yep. And uh, game five, they end up losing in, uh, to Los Angeles in 2002 in the semifinals. Um, he has 34 points and 25 rebounds. I saw that, 34 and, like, and 25. It's crazy. He just can't do it all by himself. He said it was very disappointing. Um, he had like a quote about this series because they had lost to L.A. a couple of times now, and he was just like, we just weren't enough to beat them. Yeah. And I remember thinking that. It was just like, oh, yeah, you had 35 and 25. Like, you... They can't and stop you. They a, can just stop everyone else. And that wasn't enough. Oh, yeah. God. I, I forget if it was either Shaq or Garnett who said something like, you just have to, you just have to know that this is going to happen. Yep. You just have to assume it's and going a, to happen. And accept it. Yeah, you just have to accept it. <laughs> so 2002, 2003. New building. New building. Also, you know what he does for the second consecutive year? Wins the NBA's MVP. Yep. Uh, they're looking really... A a great team again, 60 and 22, regular season. Best in NBA. Yep. And then they start reeling them off in the playoffs. They start to beat the Suns. Then they take down the Lakers in six. That was particularly satisfying to watch. Um, 37 points in game six with 16 rebounds. With 16 rebounds. So it was like last year, but this time they actually pulled it out. You know what I mean? They got a little more help. Yeah, you know, more help th- this year. So finals versus the Nets after beating Dallas. Oh was, yeah, they beat Dallas. Exciting, that oh, was yeah. the shit. The Steve Kerr game, the comeback yeah. in Game Six. Yeah, Stephen Jackson. Then uh, NBA Finals against the Nets, the Metropolitans. All ABA Final, and David Robinson's last final. Yep. Duncan almost has a quadruple double in the in Game Six. Game. Yes. So <laughs> just Game Six, crazy. they're up three to two. And people were saying, like, this is probably the best closeout game. Like, just the quadruple double. He then wins finals MVP again. Yeah. And sends Robinson off with two championships, you know? Sends him off, and San Antonio is now building a new team around him. It's like Tony Parker and Manu Ginobili. And, you know. They have these young international players coming through, which, you know, I don't like. <laughs> Um, but what are you, is... Norm Van Brocklin with those kickers? It's definitely, you see a young team come up and are great right away. That's something that you almost don't see is the rebuild almost wasn't, it was almost happening in the background. But see, that's the whole thing is like when those guys come in, it's like when Duncan came in with Robinson and Elliott, now yeah. you have guys like Duncan and Bowen, and then it's like, oh, we have Tony Parker. Oh, we have Manu Ginobili. Oh, we have all of these guys. Yes. So uh, the following year, tw- uh, 2003, 2004, uh, even by himself without David Robinson, 20 and 12. Yep. 
as always. Western Conference semifinals. This one broke my heart against Yeah, this the one was so bad. He scores with .4 seconds. Oh, God, I thought they f- – Versus the Lakers, that it was. Can literally... someone kick Derek Fisher in the ovaries? Let me just say that. Just that that ass. <laughs> like it's not like you're Robert Ori, where you won independent and have stones the size of planet Earth sinking deep threes. You are such a coattail riding douchebag. And he sinks a ridiculous buzzer beater that nobody thought was going to happen. Nope. Um, Lakers beat Spurs this year, oh, and God. then 2004, 2005. Though we come back and. They're definitely this team that has gelled. They belong Parker's, to Duncan. Park, I was just going to say, Parker and Ginobili has fallen, have fallen in line, and they've become almost like a big three that you don't really – didn't see coming. Do you know what I mean? With, with obviously – drafted and developed, not yes, acquired exactly. by a free agency. Exactly, like some which you'll never see. like to do. You'll never see again. Uh, but Duncan is obviously the leader, and Duncan is obviously just dominant. You yeah, know? and you got Bruce Bowen annoying the hell Bruce out of people. Bruce Bowen's on the, in there. Robert Ory finally joining him and doing what he used to do in Houston and with the Lakers. Um, they win 59 games. Yep. Get the number two seed. They beat the Nuggets in five, Sonics in six. And then they, the Suns were awesome this year, and they made them look pathetic. I couldn't believe how much they dominated. Well, they, they went through Denver, uh, Seattle, and a lot of people thought Suns were going to just at least be a problem, and they blew through Nash them. won the MVP that year. They were great. To meet up in Detroit with Rasheed Wallace. Walla la 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 and Ben Walla la 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 And Rasheed, yeah. Um, Coming off their malice at the palace. This is, this is another one where people thought... Well, Ben Wallace was the defensive player of the year this year. People thought that uh, the Wallace brothers... <laughs> um, but really thought Ben Wallace was going to shut him down because he, he had moved to center at this point. He wasn't just playing power forward, and the centers would guard him. So, like, a lot of people thought he was going to shut him down, and, man, did he make people look stupid. He's got, like, three to four inches because on Ben Wallace. Too. it is, yes, and he has these shots that are almost impossible to block. And Ben yeah. Wallace is very block-heavy, which, it, it, you know what I mean? Like, it, it's very, yeah. This was a seesaw. So I watched this entire series the summer I lived in Germany, actually. One first two. One the first, yeah. It was a total seesaw. I was thinking after game two, oh, they're going to go to that. They're going to yep. sweep them. And, oh, no. S- so one. much drinking in between. <laughs> <laughs> they, they lose the next two. Lose the next two. Ori pulls them back from the dead in game five. Game six, they end up losing to Detroit. That Detroit team should have won at least one or two more. I know. Like, I know. I agree, except for I do like that Spurs won this one. Yes. <laughs> um, so it's 3-3, and we get into a deciding game seven, and I mean... 25-11. and 11. Well, I mean, that's exactly what you're Wall- going to get. Wallace's quote, I feel like, was yes. the best. He just put, he said, he put his team on his shoulders and carried them to a championship. Third finals MVP, tied with Jordan and... I believe Magic Johnson and Shaquille and Shaquille had three. Okay, Um, that's that's a hell of an NBA group right there. To be oh my god, not even Kareem did that. I know it's crazy, and that's what people were saying was like the team was great. You know, like you were saying, Parker, Robert, or like all of that with like Ginobili, but man, every single big play, every single like important play, he was involved in some way. That's what Popovich was always saying. It was just like, he is the guy that's always there. Yeah. Well, and he, what was it? David Aldridge, the NBA sports writer, had something, he said something great. He's like, he let Popovich coach him. Yep. Like, he was the one that's like, oh, showed all the rest of the guys, I'm not better than you. I'm not above you. If I, if I screw up, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the heat for it, you know? I, I don't remember who it was, but it was a rookie came in. And he was like, first practice, it was like 15 minutes in. Oh, the Nazi Muhammad. It was Nazi they traded Muhammad. for him. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. And, and he came in and he, just like, he was just yelling at Tim Duncan. He was just like, oh, man, I better get my shit together. Because <laughs> if he's yelling at Tim, he's going to unload on me. <laughs> uh, following season, he's limited by plantar fasciitis. I saw that. His foot. Which, yep. But, I mean, for a big man, the lack of injuries that sidelined him is pretty amazing, considering how long his career was. Yep. Um goes into the playoffs, and 
he outduels Dirk Nowitzki, who I think won the MVP that year. Like one to one, he played better than he averaged over thirty two in that series. In that the series, yep. series, unfortunately, even with thirty nine points, they lost in Game Seven to the eventual Western Conference champions. Yeah, overtime, and a lot of people said he kind of just lost. He was a. Uh, kind of tired at this point if you if you watch it he went like one for seven yeah um it is one of those things that you're like man i wonder if the injuries kind of caught up all of that stuff uh next year uh, surprisingly goes 20 and 10 surprisingly i mean we're never we're never we don't even think about it all-star of course he's always an all-star you know uh all defense that type of thing um go to the playoffs they uh take on the nuggets uh, beat them in five. This was the playoffs, though. I think they were like the two or three seed. Yes, I think they were two. This was the one where the Warriors had that incredible series against the Mavericks. Oh, yeah, okay. It's the big, because I think okay. Dallas won like 64, 65 games. Yeah. I enjoyed that, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, beat them in five. They beat the Suns in six. This was the Steve Nash hip check series, yep. though, which the, the Suns really got douched hard. I, I can say that. They, yes. That was a. Poorly officiated. Poor, yes, but that's... Very poorly. And then they play the Jazz in the finals. In because you know what? In San Antonio, they do allow music. And then they take on LeBron James and basically the Lollipop Guild. This is one of the funniest. If you look at this Cavs team, you're just like, oh, he legitimately is the only... NBA player like they, they had Ogowskis and then Anderson Verjao who looked like Sideshow Bob Ooh. like <laughs> they were just not good and they got swept and they it was so obvious that was the thing about these finals that it weren't Detroit in this era you were just kind of like oh these teams were so overmatched by these Western Conference teams these are playoff teams who if they were in the Western Conference would be about a four seed yep would be about a five seed four or five yes definitely let no disrespect to them but no just, no it's they, just the truth of uh, no disrespect how strong to LeBron, it's just look at the cast around you and it was just how strong the West was at that time David Stern had a great quote yep. the commissioner he said Duncan is a player for the ages I'm a tennis fan, and Pete Sampras is one of the greats. Okay, he wasn't Andre Agassi or John McEnroe. He just happens to be one of the greatest players of all time. That's, that's pretty awesome. Uh, I also heard the Spurs players saying after the final, they said, this is the Tim Duncan era. They were, like, <laughs> saying that stuff. Oh, my God. And then uh, Popovich said, he just like, Tim is the common denominator in all of these situations. If you think about it, every single team that he's won with has been a little bit different. Two with Robinson, two with, you know. T- to be honest, it is a big three. Two with Robinson and Elliott, two with Ginobili and Parker. Well, and then we get into a few. I mean, he's the he's the one across the board. He's the only one with five. Yep, who wasn't part of the coaching staff. Yep, he's the only one, and we'll get into that later. Um, two thousand seven, two thousand eight. This is when the Spurs kind of start showing their age a little bit, as far as not necessarily their big three, but the pieces around them and how good the Lakers have finally rebuilt their Death Star. Yep. Um, Goes almost 20 and 10. Uh, go to the Western Conference Finals, though, and lose to the Lakers. The Lakers. Next three seasons, not a lot of postseason success. Uh, knee problems. Uh, despite being an all star every season, yeah, knee problems. The 2010 2011 was particularly heartbreaking. They lost to Memphis in the first round. That was. When they had the best record. Uh, I think that was their first first round exit in like years, you know, since like 2000 or some yeah, shit. Yeah, since the, was, sun, the series he didn't play in. Yes, it was it was brutal. Forever fuck Memphis for yeah. that one. <laughs> but at that point, he became the Spurs all time leader in points and games played. And games played. A for, thousand, he, he had hit his thousandth game and he beat. Uh, George Garvin, who people did not think it was going to happen because you didn't see players play for one team. When you think about it, though, if the only guys that you're surpassing are George Garvin and David Robinson. Yes. I mean, your franchise up to that point isn't working with a hell of a deep bench. No. They're Artemis. But still, those two guys are And then he goes on to have so many more points, too, because he, he is a 2010 guy. So, so his, they said when he played in his 1,000th game, the record with him playing was 707 and 293. The only other player with a better winning percentage over his first 1,000 games was Scottie Pippen. Yep. Who had Michael Jordan. I'm pretty sure he had them for all 1,000 games, excluding the baseball stint, when they were still also very good. They were still good, yeah. Um, 
2011, 2012. Uh, a funny story from this season. Popovich, as the load management started, yep. he uh, listed did not do not did not participate old on the coaching sheet, which I, I found that. was pretty fun because they definitely did have a great relationship where they just like played with each other. And he said because he was so focused on the court or in interviews behind the scenes, he is very joking and. Oh, yeah. And someone that you want to play for. You know what I mean? Like, that's how the his leadership style was. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, following season 2012-2013, uh, kind of has the renaissance after they lose to the Thunder in the lockout shortened season. He's an all-star again. Yep. Almost 18-10. and 10, All NBA first team. They sweep the Lakers. They beat Golden State. They sweep the Grizzlies in the finals, which was nice. He has his 500th postseason block. Guess whose career record he broke? Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Kareem. Um, and then we see them. Him. They go to the finals versus the Heat, and this oh, is God very surprising because we everybody felt like this team was kind of done and ready to rebuild. They should have. This. This should have been one. They should have shut yep. it in that douchebag's face. Uh, they lo- They end up losing to the Heat. Um, and oh, Kawhi! Why, buddy? Why, buddy? <laughs> Kawhi! Why? Why? Duncan dropped in twenty-five in the first half in games. I remember. And, yep. that I was so. Oh, and the scene, go look it up. It exists. There are pictures everywhere of those fair weather, you know what's from Miami douchebags all outside the stadium at the end of the game thinking they've lost. Th- thought they lost, yes. Your typical non Florida man, Florida sporting fan. <laughs> Florida man. 2013 14. They fucking run it the fuck back. And that's, oh. that's why it was so good because you, you really thought this was going to be their last shot. They miss their opportunity. They go back to the playoffs. They beat Dallas. They beat Portland. They beat a good Kansas City team, which I still can't believe that stupid ass team. Oh, the Thunder. Yeah, oh my the, God. yeah, the Thunder with you know Oklahoma. Westbrook and and the Durant. Harden. The, no, Harden nah, was he, in, he, he was in Harden. Houston at that I think, point. I think he had moved. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so they meet up with Miami again. Oh, this is beautiful. And they destroy them. That that it's, game. Oh, that game five. Yep. Oh, God, when Ginobili threw it down. Oh, and God. That, it's such a weird thing because obviously that wasn't the... And Leonard couldn't miss. He yeah. was so pissed from you could tell. It was great. No, that it was such a great stamp. He gets his fifth championship. Um, the only other player to have three or a, a championship this. in three separate decades is him and John Sally. And John Sally was kind of a bench player. Outside of Detroit, I really don't think he played very often. For sh- Like, he was on the team, don't he get was, me wrong. Oh, yeah, he earned a ring just as much as anyone else, yes. but he's not the focal point. <laughs> he's not the focal point in every single championship. Do you know what I mean? Where it, yeah. it, was, it was such a, the Tim Duncan era was 98 to, you know, 2000 and whatever, when he retires. See, it's the next 16. couple of seasons. Yeah. Kind of kind of down years for him. It's, yeah, yeah, I mean, he's, but he's like close to 40. I was just going to say, he's 38. He's a big man. <laughs> so averaging about 12 and 8, which compared, when you're 39, 40 years old, it's pretty good in the NBA. Pretty solid numbers. Um, they end up losing uh, postseason series to both the Clippers and then uh, Oklahoma City. And then uh, December 18th, 2016, they retire as number 21 in San Antonio. I saw on like the... Like Forest. Well, I saw in his last game... They didn't make an announcement that it was going to be his last game. Yeah. He just ended the game, walked off, and then about two weeks later, the Spurs just released a blurb that said Tim Duncan retired. It's like the so most Barry was, Sanders way of retiring. It was such – and just hi, himself. You know what I mean? It was such a Tim Duncan way. Um, and the other thing – because just like his personality is something that I love is they retired his jersey – and he showed up, and Popovich was asking him to wear a suit. Yeah. And he just goes, I wore the jacket. I'm not going to wear the tie. <laughs> it was, it, it's one of those things where you're just like, and they always just mess with each other. And, and the, the relationship with that, where you think about it, this was a dynasty where Duncan had five championships, three MVP, MVP um, finals you know what I mean? So two-time like two-time league MVP, two-time league MVP, and then you know fourteen All Stars. I don't know, fifteen All Stars, fifteen All Defense. Yep. It, he literally, and this is this is what the only debate is: is he started as a power forward, then went and played center mainly, is, but in this era for a a, a big man. I'll put him as a power forward, and I think he absolutely was the best over, you know, 
Garnett and Nowitzki. The Nowitzki. big fundamental. That's what Shaq called him, which is perfect. Like, what an amazing nickname from from Shaq. <laughs> That's what he also tried to call his penis, but they were like, nah, no, 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 no. We we need proof. No, we need proof. Before Tim Duncan it, is the proof. Before we call it that, Tim Duncan's we need proof. The proof. <laughs> I just did want to bring one thing up for his career stats. How similar they are. Yes. From regular season to postseason, which is just the type of player he was. In 19 years, he averaged 19 points a game, 10.8 rebounds, three assists, 2.2 blocks. And in 251 postseason games, 20.6 points a game, 11.4 rebounds, three assists, 2.3. He's just the slightly same. better in the postseason. Yep. But you can just count on him for that. That was the big thing was he was absolutely Mr. Reliable in that he would get you 2010 every night. That was the thing. For two decades, you as Spurs fans were just like, it, it's almost like you missed it in a way where yep. you were just like, he really was that, but it wasn't like sizzle reel. It was just big fundamental yep. every single night, 20 and 10. That, I do everything correctly. That turnaround jumper at the side the, of the, the key. The bank shot, yep, the, the mid range game, him in the paint. Oh, block shot. Yeah, the hook oh. shot. It, he, he had so many just fundamental ways to score. It's all such the a ridiculous. Moves. Yeah. God dang, dude. Tim Duncan. And one of the best defensive players. So Exactly. Yep. Tim Duncan.